to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. <clears throat> Be praying for our open air meetings this summer. Uh, we uh, try to get out into the park and do some open air, uh, open air preaching, passing out tracts, do some singing. And I think I've got a, a good setup this year for uh, so that we've got a uh, little bit of PA, and so uh, be praying for that. First Corinthians 16. In verse 7, For I will not see you now by the way, but I trust to tarry a while with you, if the Lord permit. But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. Now watch verse 9. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me. There are many adversaries. Now, if Timotheus come, see that uh, ye be uh, that he may be uh, with you without fear, for he worketh the works of the Lord, as I also do. Let's bow our heads and pray. Now, Father, thank you for the things that you give to us, and help us, Lord, to know that if we're in your will, if we're praying, if we're seeking your face, if we're giving you the honor and glory. And Lord, you will pour out a blessing on us. Help us, Lord, to realize that you are worthy of all the praise, honor, and glory. Help us, Lord, to be taken back at your wondrous works. Help us, Lord, to contemplate the flower. Feel the coolness of the grass. Help us, Lord, to listen as the water flows. Help us, Lord, to know that it's all in your hand and all in your control. Bless now, Father, we pray. Help us to get something from your word tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Paul said here in verse 9 that a great door of effectual is opened unto me and there are many adversaries. We need to realize in the ministry, in the battle that we're in, and we're in a battle. Amen. Don't uh, Listen, don't ever think that you're not in a battle. Uh, I believe I believe that our church has seen more battle probably in the last four or five years, and I and I and I and I know why. Our church is doing more in the last five years than we've ever done. The fact that uh, these messages go around the world, the devil don't like that. Amen. The fact that that we've got people buying piles and piles of gospel tracts and, and we're at the fair passing out gospel tracts. The devil doesn't like it. <coughs> he fights churches like that. Amen? He fights them. But the thing that we need to understand is that the battle is the Lord's. <coughs> He's the Lord of the battle. He's the one uh, that gives us. But thanks be unto God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, the devil doesn't bother. I was talking to some folks and they said, uh, well, we go to such and such church and there's no turmoil there. <laughs> could, I, could, I, could, I tell you, could I tell you where there's no turmoil? There's never turmoil in a funeral home. Amen? The, the corpse does exactly what the funeral director says. The corpse never argues with the funeral director. Amen. I could tell you some really gruesome things about corpses that, uh, <laughs> that, that they have problems with, but uh, we won't get into that. <laughs> uh, if you ever go to an anatomy class, they, they'll tell you. They'll tell you the things that uh, about that. 
But uh, listen to me. You know what? Uh, in a dead church, in a dead church, there's never any conflict. You know, everybody loves, uh, oh, we just love each other. But what are they doing? They get the gospel out, going out, passing out tracts. They, they, you know, get folks saved. Uh, uh, visit and things such as that. Uh, they don't do that. Paul said that there, there is a great door of effectual is opening unto me. And what we're doing right now, we're seeing a great door of effectual opening. The, the, the praise that we have before the service, uh, 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 bragging on Jesus and talking about uh, how wonderful He is, that's, that's, uh, th that helps to get the doors open. When we go out into the streets and pass out tracts and, and sing, sing some songs and, and, uh, and tell people about Jesus, that's an effectual door. And so we have great opportunity to grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's look at 2 Peter uh, chapter 3. Way back there by Revelation. 2 Peter. Second Peter chapter uh, three. Second Peter chapter three. And uh, in verse eighteen, Peter says, "But grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever." Amen. God wants us to grow. We have an opportunity to grow. Every time we come and hear the Word of God, you have an opportunity to grow. Uh, when I was a young preacher, I would sit. I would sit right down in front of the, right down in front of the preacher. The preacher told me when I was in school that uh, I needed to stop sitting in the back of the classroom, and uh, I had a terrible time. I'm, I was ADHD, uh, couldn't read and write, and. And all of the kids that couldn't read and write, they would all sit in the back of the classroom and they'd go to sleep and then everybody else would get educated. And uh, the preacher says, now you can't sit back there anymore. I don't want you sitting back there anymore. And I want you to sit in the front. So after I got saved and started coming to church, I never, I never, I don't think I've ever sit more than two or three rows back from the front. Because you know what? I want to get everything that's being taught. Now, I'm not hollering at you guys that sit in the back. You know, we got a small church. <laughs> and I know that we have, that our, that our seats are awful close in the front. Amen? And, you know, about two or three rows back here is the spray zone. Amen? Remember that at Shamu, you know? And uh, so we, we got a problem here. But, but, uh, but listen, we, we, need to be, we need to be excited about getting the Word of God. And I wanted to grow. I wanted to grow in my spiritual life. And I want you to grow in your spiritual life. Peter said, grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So tonight, as you leave this place, say, Lord, did I get something to grow? Did I write something down? It, 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 not, not as much in this Bible that I have now, but in the last three or four Bibles, I think, I think this is about my fourth Bible uh, that I've gone through in 45 years. Uh, but in my older Bibles, I've got, I've got tons and tons of notes. One of these days, I, I would love to have all of the notes transferred over to one Bible. Amen. <laughs> and that would be a wonderful thing. But uh, uh, listen... Those are things that I learned as I sat and heard the Word of God. Those were opportunities of spiritual growth. Listen to me. You are either growing or you're drifting. You're either getting closer to Jesus or you're going farther away. That's right. Amen. There's no in-between. Every day when you get up, you need to say, Lord, I want to be more like you today. I want, to, I want to put something out of my life that is not what you are. Today, I want to, 
I want to harvest something. I want to pick a piece of spiritual fruit and make it a part of my life today. We have opportunities to grow every day. Look at Psalms 119. Psalms 119. Psalms 119 is probably one of the most interesting books in the Bible. Uh, <laughs> it would be good for us all to read Psalms 119 every day. <laughs> if you could do that. Amen. <coughs> Psalms 119 and verse 11. Psalms 119 and verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. We need the Word of God so that we have growth opportunity. I was teaching at uh, First Baptist uh, today uh, at the First Baptist Christian School. And, uh, and the title of my message, Will You Follow Him All the Days of Your Life? And I asked, I asked these questions. What's your favorite music? What is your favorite music? Do you think people, do you think daily of people dying and going to hell? Do you wake thinking of spiritual things? Do you look forward to the church services? And, uh, and, uh, and, then I, and then I asked this. I said, if you do look forward to it, why? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Some of our boys and girls said, man, we get cookies at Sunday school. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the teenagers says, I get to sit by you. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, so, so why, why, if you look forward to it? Uh, I asked the question, do you think of answering life's questions in light of Scripture? The way you answer those questions uh, has a lot to do with whether you'll still be serving Jesus Christ ten years from today. You answer those questions correctly according to what God uh, would have you to answer them. And I can promise you this. If you'll keep doing that, you know what? That until the day you die, you're going to be in love with Jesus. You're going to be in love with the Savior. I mean, today, the, the, the praise that went on tonight before the service, that'll just be a foretaste of glory divine. Do you talk to God as your best friend? We spend more time on the phone with best friends than we talk to God. Ought not to be. We ought to talk to God more every day than anybody else in the world. If you know Him, if, you, if it's personal, how many of you have ever had a best friend? Let me see your hand. Uh, just about everybody's had at least a best friend at a time or two in their life. And I've had some best friends. And uh, uh, it disappoints me that some of my, my best friends, people that came up with me as a young teenager, uh, some of the people that uh, were in the ministry with me, aren't in the ministry today. The answers to those questions that I said have changed in their lives. And I pray that I will always I pray that I'll always be able, by the grace of God, to answer those all of those questions in the way that God would want me to answer them. We have an opportunity in the Word of God. God said, God said there in, uh, in verse 11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. 
In 2 Timothy, uh, the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you've spent time in the word, you can quote the word. And, and listen, you know, just get a hold of God's word. Learn scripture. Say, oh, I can't do that. My goodness, you certainly can. Listen to this. Brush up, brush up, brush up. New iPad of toothpaste. Brush up, brush up, brush up. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know when Ipana was around? <laughs> that was 1950s. Yes. And do you know who advertised Ipana toothpaste? Uh, who knows who uh, advertised Ipana toothpaste? What was their little? What was their little logo? What was? It? Oh well, it was a little beaver. Yeah, Bucky Beaver. That's right, baby. <laughs> You don't think you can remember scripture? She remembers Bucky Beaver. Amen. Man, he had some of the biggest teeth you ever saw in your life. That, that toothpaste really made him good. Amen, buddy. He could, he could cut down them trees, buddy. You can, you can remember those things. Amen. Somebody needs to remember about their phone. <laughs> <laughs> grow, grow daily in the Word. Grow daily in prayer. Let's look at let, look at Matthew six six. Matthew six six. We have a door of opportunity. Matthew chapter six and verse six. But thou when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetition as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Grow in prayer. Find a place where you and God can sit for a while and just talk to Him. Just talk to Him. Somebody remembered that theirs was on. Boy, I hope mine's off. <laughs> Amen. Or I hope everybody remembers never to call me during the service. <laughs> Study to show thyself approved unto God and workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Learn it. Memorize it. You know why most people have trouble, spiritual trouble? is because, because they don't know what God thinks about what they're doing. <laughs> I, want God, I want God's opinion. Listen to me. Listen to me. You ought to write it down somewhere in the flyleaf of your Bible. I want God's opinion on everything that I do. I think God's concerned about what clothes I wear. How I talk to people. I think God's uh, concerned about business. How we do our business. God's concerned about those things. And we have an opportunity to grow in the Lord, to be in the Word, to spend time in prayer, to witness to people, to worship. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to be one of those churches, oh, let's have a worship time. You know, we get up here and have a play instead of preach. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Uh, you know what worship is? It's personal time between you and God. And you know what? Church is for preaching. Worship 
is for just you and God. Amen. Just you and God find some place. That's where we worship. Lord, you've been a friend to me. Lord, you're the best thing I got. Lord, where would I be without you? It's the way husbands and wives ought to be. You're the best thing that ever happened to me. The marriage relationship is supposed to be on earth what our relationship is to God in heaven. Pure ecstasy. That's what it's supposed to be. We have opportunity. But we have opposition. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the devil don't like us taking opportunity. <laughs> the the uh, nothing worse than bringing a knife to a gunfight. Amen. <laughs> when I was in the service, they said, "Listen, we strike first. <laughs> Amen. To take, taking the opportunity is always the taking the offense is always." Always the best defense. Amen. We've got we've listen. Has the devil taken opportunity on you? <laughs> yes. Amen. He sure has. I mean, boy, I tell you what. On every every turn, every every time you look around the corner, don't stick your head around the corner. He'll blow it off. Amen. You've got to take opportunity against him. Now, don't do it in your name. Don't do it in your name. You try to do it in your name, you'll end up like that guy in the book of Acts where the devil says, And who are you? <laughs> Don't you dare try to take opportunity in your name. Don't try to fight the devil with your wisdom or your knowledge or your power. You're powerless against him. You can't fight the devil in the flesh. Look at uh, Ephesians. Uh, six. Ephesians chapter six. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter six and verse twelve, the Bible says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you might be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, stand therefore. But the only way you're going to be able to stand is if you're standing in the power of His might. That's right. <coughs> Don't don't you dare think that you can do anything in your name. The devil's been grinding up people for centuries. I don't want to be the devil's freshest hamburger, amen? I don't want you to be either. The only way that you'll be able to fight him, to oppose him, is in the power of God's might. Wherefore, take on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day. And we've preached 10,000 times on the things that you need to wear, things that you need to do to stand against the opposition. But God is able. We have opportunity. We have opposition. 
But thanks be unto God who giveth us the victory. But thanks be unto God who giveth us the victory. God, I want your victory. I don't want the victory for me. I want the victory for you. I want the victory to come from you. Let's stand and pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you so much for your word tonight. And I pray that, Lord, such a simple message. But I pray, Lord, that uh, it might lay on our hearts some of the questions that were asked, Lord, I pray that people could answer them rightly. Lord, I pray that I can answer them rightly. And Lord, I know that there's times when I can't answer them rightly. <clears throat> but I want to answer them rightly, Lord, because I, I want to meet you face to face. And for you to be able to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, Lord, I, help me to do the things that I ought to do so that I can be a faithful servant. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, work on our behalf. Father, bless us during this invitation time, Lord, we pray. Might we come preparing ourselves for maybe something that was said that needs to come before you today. Help us, Lord, to bring that. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have a need tonight, you come. <clears throat>